At Melior, we pay particular attention to colour. Not only the tone, but also how colour can influence a given scene. In the video world, the look of an image tends to fall into two categories, a digital look and a film look. Today we'll be looking and discussing the film look, particularly 16mm film emulation and recreating the look on our Sony a7 III 8-bit footage. We have tried different methods in trying to emulate film with our Sony a7 III footage, and after trying a few different things, we finally found something that is easy to use, provides a quick workflow, and most importantly, creates a desirable look. It is called CinePrint 16. My name is Rag, and I'm just one part of Amelior Studios. And today I'm going to be quickly showing you how we emulate film using CinePrint 16 for 8-bit footage. Um, this can be used for Sony, Canon, Panasonic, um, Blackmagic, anything really. Um, it doesn't have to be 8-bit footage either. And as you can see, we're using DaVinci Resolve 16 Studio um, instead of 17 Studio. That's just because we haven't had a chance to upgrade yet, but you'll be able to do that exactly the same thing on both softwares. So let's get into the color tab and get straight into it. So you'll be able to see that we are using a frame, um, just a clip from An Afternoon Alone, um, a video we posted on YouTube not too long ago. So if you go down to Power Grade in the Gallery tab and you scroll all the way down, you're going to see this in your print 16 um, power grade. So you're going to double click this and that's going to show up here. So now you've got your node tree and of course the image isn't looking great, but that's why we are here to quickly show you a step-by-step -step on how to get a nice looking image. Um, so we're going to go to cam prep, right click, show compound node and go to CST and open effects. And we're going to go to input color space. Now we shoot on our Sony a7 III camera, color mode is the ITU709 matrix. A lot of you will be shooting on um, S gamut color mode. And so if you're using S gamut, you're gonna go here and you're gonna press S gamut, but we shoot in ITU709 matrix. So we're gonna just click our rec 709. And then you're gonna go to input gamma and we shot this in S log two. And so if you are shooting in S log two, whatever log you're shooting on, then you can go down to do do do. I'm gonna go down to S log two. Um, so yeah, as you can see already, it's so much better than it was to begin with. And literally, we are almost there. So if we close this down, you can to close this down to get back. Go to CinePrint 16 tutorial. Just double click this, and you're back. So so far, so good. You're probably halfway done, and this literally takes a few minutes. So next thing we're going to do is go to exposure. So we're going to just quickly adjust the exposure using the primary wheels. So as you can see here, we did clip the footage on some clips, but it doesn't matter, um, especially with film. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I found shadows are a lot more important for film than highlights. But of course, with film, you get really high dynamic range anyways, which is hard to replicate with these cameras. Um, but yeah, we'll carry on. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to exposure and we're just going to drop this camera bit down um, there there's good and then we're just going to drop that gain a little bit as well and then we're actually going to bring the camera up and then bring the gate down and then bring the camera up and then gain down a bit and you just scrub through other parts of the footage see what it's looking like that's looking a bit flat so we're going to bring that gain up a bit so one problem that you might get with this Film emulation is that the reds are very get very bright, um, but Tom is a genius and has found a way to get around this. So you have this thing called NS Matrix, and you're just gonna click the 15, and then that's gonna basically deset and de vibrancy. I don't think those are words, but that's what I'm gonna say. Um, those reds and pinks, uh, of course, they're too much, but obviously we can use tone curves to kind of reduce those um, later on. So the next thing we're gonna do, which is a big thing. Um, really kind of you should be doing this first is white balance and as you can see you have the famous sony magenta hue um which is kind of annoying but you can get around it very easily with this white balance so you're gonna go to offset which is um right here oh, great that's great circle um and then we're just gonna push this towards the green and the yellows and as you can see that's already so much better um so if we zoom out um, and then we do, so that's before, 
as after. It might be a bit too green, so you can move it towards the warmer hue a bit. So that's good. So that's before and after. It's a very subtle change, but it just gets rid of that magenta hue before the white balance doing and then after the white balance. And you can already see a big difference. So we're literally, essentially, we're almost there. So the next thing we're going to do is press Alt S to make a new node. And what we're going to do is we're just going to add a bit more warmth to this. So we're going to go to Gamma and we're just going to drag this towards the warmth. Not too much, just very slightly just to give it a bit more of a warmer feeling like that. So that's before and after. It's very slight. So one more thing that we're going to do is show you how to create almost that softer glowy look to this. Um, and it's a very common thing that is done. If you're not using a promise, we do have a promise, but for this, we didn't use a promise. So what you can do is you can go through the open effects and find glow. So if we find glow, there we go. And you just drag it on top of the node. And what you're going to do is go to shine threshold and you're just going to increase this little by little until that sky is kind of illuminated a bit. So what we're going to do is increase the spread just so it's not too saturated in one area. Um, and that's kind of good. We're happy with that before, after you kind of get this nice, nice little glow. That might be a bit too much. You can go into brightness over here and then you can just reduce the brightness. For us, this is still a bit, this might be a bit too green. So we're just going to go to white balance and then just lift that up towards the reds a little bit, just a tiny bit, just to kind of give that warm, warmish kind of feeling. <laughs> we do apologize for the fans of the laptop. It's going a bit crazy. So the next thing we're going to do is change the color of the leaves of the trees, um, just so you get a bit more separation from him and the background. So we're going to make another node and then we're going to go to the curves adjustment, go over to the hue versus hue and just select the leaf and you're going to get this little notch that appears and you're just going to move that down, I think. Yep. So down and you can already see, so that's before and after how much of a difference that kind of makes. You get that nice separation with colors. You got the nice contrast of orange and green, um, which works really well with images and we're just going to move this across so you're affecting more of those yellows and greens and then we're just going to drag you don't want to drag it too much or it's just going to get a bit crazy um, as you can see it is affecting his hair a little bit but if you're not moving it too much small adjustments are always key and obviously for us this is a bit too saturated so you can go over to hue versus sat and then again select these leaves and then just move that down a bit Select. So that was before, and that was after. So now the leaves have a bit more life to them. This is more green. It's, it's pretty. Um, it's pretty green to be fair. Um, might want to reduce that to a bit less. It's still kind of nice. So now you got just that. Oh, just the separation is so much better now. Um, so probably the last thing that we're going to do is go to resin grain and adjust the grain. Uh, you do have a blur node as well here, but if you go to open effects, if you don't want the blur, the blur kind of gives it a nice soft look. If I get rid of it, you know, it gets a bit more sharper, but 16 millimeter film usually isn't the sharpest. Unlike 35 millimeter film, 35 millimeter film is usually a lot sharper. You go down to eight mil, then it gets even less sharp. So the next thing, what we're going to do is turn that back on actually and then go to grain so we use 16 millimeter archival so you may not be able to use this if you don't have davinci resolve studio 16 but you can download um, overlays that you can put on top of this footage which is a good way of getting over um, studio film grain that you're not able to use if i explain that correctly um, so as easy as this we're just going to up the grain strength just by a little bit so we're going to increase the strength of the grain. And for us, we usually like the grain kind of big. So we're going to increase the grain size with bigger grain. Um, it just looks, it just gives a much nicer texture. You can see on his arm that the, uh, the effect of changing the leaves kind of changes 
the color of this bit of the arm you can go in and quickly adjust that so let's find a um, it's really not that bad but easiest way to fix is just go back into this node and you pull this away from the oranges towards that yellow so it's affecting his arm a lot less lovely grain and you've got warmth that's been added now and everything is looking a lot nicer so this was before just a very digital looking image to a nice very filmic looking image it looks a bit different to how we did an afternoon alone but the concept is very much similar um so i hope you did enjoy this tutorial if you did awesome if you didn't i do apologize i know the sound was a bit iffy and i probably got some of the terminology wrong but this is how we kind of grade and we just want to show this just very rawly and quickly because uh, it is a really quick process um yeah hopefully we'll have a few more of these tutorials coming up some on digital um making more of a digital look yeah just quick workflows and things like that so yeah hope you have a, a lovely lovely evening thank you